Hey guys, Caitlin Dunn here. I decided to do my paper on security challenges for cloud-based email infrastructure. So cloud-based applications have gotten really popular over the years. These used to be stored on cloud or on-premise, but now they're moving to the cloud. Um, and this is because cloud-based solutions come with a variety of benefits. They're available anytime, anywhere. They don't have the need for regular maintenance. They're better protected against downtimes and outages, <clears throat> and they don't require as much attention on backups and upgrades. Email applications that are cloud-based have especially noticed an increase in usage, and it has a lot of the same benefits that I just spoke on, but they're even more popular because a lot of times employees need to stay in touch with work, and it's a lot easier to whip out your phone than it is to carry your laptop with you. Also, too, though, apart from accessing email on mobile devices, they're usually on an employee's own personal phone, which, you know, in and of itself is a huge security concern. And apart from mobile access, employees can't really control or employers can't control, you know, what networks their employees are going on and accessing their email with. So it's not really any surprise cloud-based email platforms are often a hacker's target of choice, not just with stealing information, too. Compromised corporate email causes serious business disruptions, and this has hugely negative financial impact, regardless of business size, and PR nightmares, particularly for larger enterprises. So mitigating these risks is becoming absolutely paramount for organizations, and with so many options out there, it's hard to know what, what the right solution is. So that brings me to my paper. The main contribution of this was to illuminate the susceptibility of cloud-based email platforms by examining the kinds of threats they're facing and to investigate some of the security solutions that are available. So actually a few questions are being addressed in this paper, um, the first of which being what kind of threats do these cloud-based email systems face, what mitigations are available, and which of those mitigations seems to be the most effective. And to answer these questions, they evaluated email security um, by presenting a case study with solutions to mitigate these issues, and they configured two SMTP servers and evaluated six different scenarios. They also studied different anti-spam and filtering techniques. Um, and email security issues related to spam, anti-spam filtering was also evaluated using machine learning, so I just wanna throw in a little side note. I work in cybersecurity and I've seen a ton of overlap with security solutions and machine learning. That's the direction things are moving in because security teams just don't have time to keep up with the tasks. So automation is the only way that they can keep up with all the threats. So anyway, they use pattern classifiers to quantify the performance of the email systems during spam attacks. Instead of investigating end user mail client security or end to end email encryption, they analyzed cipher suites and the certificates involved focusing on connections to SMTP that rely on TLS, uh, which for anyone that doesn't know is transport layer security. They conducted two surveys. The first was a detailed evaluation of email service providers um, and the security features that they do provide. And the second survey involved 500 users, what their email security practices and knowledge were, um, and their confidence level. So the survey of service providers revealed that there were, an, there were some security protocols in place, but they fell short on a number of issues like customizable message filtering, lack of detailed tutorials, information about current events or attacks, and just kind of a general lack of information about you know, general security. So no best practice for email usage was offered. Little to no enhanced security features to protect against advanced persistent threats were offered, and that's huge considering how detrimental those are. Um, and there's also a lack of protection against user ID spoofing. And I wanna mention something called domain spoofing that I've seen in my work recently. Um, hackers are using international letters and link embedding to appear more legit. So I could use international letters that might look like Apple to your, like the human eye, but the two Ps are actually letters in a different language. So it's not gonna get picked on, picked up on by like a filtering system unless, unless it's specifically targeted towards um, picking up on mimicked names. So these could be very easily overlooked. The research results found the supported claim that I mentioned earlier, um, that most users access their email through webmail interfaces. And I think ignorantly, a lot of people expect their service providers are catering to their security needs. So it's considered an afterthought for average people, but I would say even for a lot of IT professionals. 
This also found that very few users actually keep their anti-malware or anti-spam systems updated and they never use email encryption. One of the features offered by email systems is header analysis for tracking email sources and hardly any of the surveyed users utilize this or even knew about it. And the same goes for authentication protocols. Overall, the survey found that people are seriously underinformed when it comes to email security. And they did it again after conducting a simple training um, practice and every single parameter showed improvement. So it shows that it wouldn't really take a lot to give people kind of a leg up and just let them know what's out there. They also compared the security advantages of Office 365 with a in-house hosted email system and found that the cloud provider interestingly offered uh, more enhanced security measures um, with you know, encryption and multi-layered architecture. They kind of uh, concluded on you know, that there were some things that could be done to mitigate, um, but again, a lot of it's opinion-based, I'm finding. But anyway, they concluded add-on email security protocols use encryption, PKI-based cryptographic techniques, IP address verification, DNS-based domain validation. Um, these are, again, spoofing and other email threats. Uh, but no one protocol independently works to provide all the required security features. So that's why it's kind of like a pick and choose here. So they were able to come up with some recommendations that include multi-factor authentication, network and application level DDoS protection, automated outbound filtering, the ability to handle compliance needs, which is, I mean, that's becoming a really big, big trend. Um, within the last couple of years, the government has set forth new compliance standards and mandated businesses and organizations adhere to them. So it's, it's definitely growing. And they also suggested automated key management, encryption, advanced threat protection. That's probably the biggest one. Um, so I wish that they would have looked into what the employee training is being done surrounding information security instead of just asking users their current knowledge. I realize that if users don't know, they're either getting no or inadequate training. But I feel like looking at what training is being done could have highlighted either, hey, these users know about these threats and this is what their companies did to train them, or hey, these users don't and here's the training they received, so here's what we could do better. And I think another shortfall was not exploring more on the email security solutions that can be purchased for organizations. A lot of them claim to do the same thing and a lot of them say that they're the best. But I think it would have been helpful to take, you know, what they did a step further to say, here's what these companies say that they do, but here is like what, what the actually best product does when it's tested. So for those reasons, yes, I think that they could expand on these results, look at, you know, come up with a most effective employee training model. Here are the best products on the market, put them through hurdles to test which ones would be the most helpful. Because um, again, they all claim to do the same thing and claim to be the best at it, so they have to be tested. Um, another paper I found, like mine, is, let me just get rid of that, <laughs> is this one. It talks about how email security has become such a hot topic with rapid advancement in exploits and vul vulnerabilities, which is why this is becoming such a huge issue. 80% of their survey respondents said they considered email to be more valuable than phones for business communications. So it's not really any surprise that this is such a concern these days. And then it goes on to outline the various threats to email security, focuses on those that are particularly concerning, and then gives some advice on the re recent advancements looking to mitigate these. So all in all, I think that email is the preferred method of communication in the workplace, so it needs to be treated accordingly with, you know, importance in terms of security. So anyway, thanks for listening, guys. I hope everyone has an awesome break.